it's gonna, there's going to be people that come into your life, like the people sitting next to Zacchaeus, when they saw him in a, tr in a tree, they ridiculed him and said, why are you in a tree? Jesus doesn't even want to see the likes of you. When Jesus wants to see the likes of everyone. I can't talk about it enough, but God loves us so, so much. No matter how tall we are, no matter how short we are, he loves us not because who we are, but because who whose we are, we're his. Hi, I'm Chloe. Hi, friends. So tonight I'm talking to you about growth. Woo, my side's not up there, so. Okay, you can move to the next one. <laughs> okay, so. This is my first point, and this is talking about why are we doing what we are doing. And I really am grateful that we just had this awesome worship moment because my whole lesson is about like when you get this big, when God gives you this big Holy Spirit moment and you're just so filled with him that you can't do anything but praise him. But then now, now, now I'm down here. Now I'm here, now I'm alone at home, and I have these thoughts. And, you know, this is where we grow. We don't grow when we're in the, we don't grow when we're being poured into where we grow later, because it takes time to like apply it into our lives. And this is like, this verse right here, this verse always convicts me. Every time I read this, I'm like, this isn't me. This isn't like, when it comes out, I'm, when I read it, I'm like, this is not who I am. And you can switch to the next slide because these verses just are showing what God wants us to do. And he wants us to have clean speech. He wants us to love one another above all. And that's hard. It's really hard not to use corrupting talk and to love your neighbor as you love yourself. That's something I struggle with most is not putting people under me or above me or rating myself, but just looking at them as God's children. I, it's, I don't, the only way I can do it is with God. And the next verse is about when we're anxious and how we get choked and how when anxiety comes, we can't be for God because anxiety just separates us. We're not, when the devil gets a place into your heart and your mind, you stop living for him and you start living for the devil. And it may only be for a moment, it may be for a month, or it may be for a day, but it happens. And I want us to stop that. I want you guys to have the tools to help you battle. When the Satan comes knocking, I want you to be able to say, no more. And I don't want us to talk about these things and you guys to feel guilty because that's not what God wants. What God wants is for you to know that he has no condemnation for you. He has just love. We just had that moment where we were breaking chains and we were just, oh, yay, take this off of me. Well, I don't want you to feel guilty anymore because there's no reason. You're not disgusting. You're not unlovable. It's not, it's not something that's going to stop him from loving you. Just because you've done it or you're doing it doesn't mean he's going to stop. Like, that's not how it works. And now I get to share with you about what you can do for those times when you're like, I just really want to give in, God. I just really want to stop living for you and start living for, you, for myself. So this is how do you do this? How do you grow your faith? Well, the first step is the hardest one for me. Well, these are all hard. This sermon really convicts me, but in order to grow, we need to connect with others. And I don't, this isn't just, you know, go to school, come to Elevate, and then go home. This is accountability people, accountability partners. We need, I need people in my life who text me every day and said, Chloe, were you in your Bible? Chloe, did you pray today? Chloe, did you fall into temptation? Because I, I mess up. I mess up just as much as any one of you. And when you have someone who comes alongside of you and says, hey, I mess up too, 
It's so much easier to battle temptations. It's so much easier to be in God's word when you have someone else doing it with you. I love the Bible app because you can do Bible plans with friends, and that's the only way I do a Bible plan anymore because it's the only way that I'm held accountable because then I'm like, ooh, they saw I didn't do it. Ooh, they saw I just catched up two days in one day. And... It's not going to be easy. I'm just going to say it now. We live in a generation where we're very consumed with our thoughts of ourselves. And we're like, well, do I look the best? You know, she's prettier than me. He's cuter than me. I can't go talk to him because he's better than me. And that's not how it is. When, When Jesus died on the cross, he didn't die for your beauty. He didn't die because you're good or you're bad. He died because he loves you. And that love cast out all fears. But in order to experience that love and to know what God's love is, you have to let other people love on you. And you have to come into these places like Elevate and let us pour into you. Because when you try to, when you walk away from this and you're not being poured into, it just cuts off. You're no longer a part of that. So what I really want for you guys to take home is that Elevate isn't just a student ministry. We're a family. Like I'm so proud to say that I get to come here on my Sunday nights and spend it with these people. Because what God has done in my life and so many others' lives is extraordinary. And I wouldn't be who I was if I didn't have the friends I have in here. And my second point is to, well, It's to get in his word daily. Sorry, I didn't realize it was up there. If you want to know who God is, the first step is always just get in his word. I can't explain this enough. People used to say this all the time. I'd be like, eh, not for me. I don't need to do it. I'm good. Or I just don't have the attention for it. I told myself a lot, that a lot. But here's the thing. God's word comes to you in so many versions. You can listen to it. You can read it. You can, you know, there's coloring books. There's really no excuse for you not to be in his word daily. And that's coming from me who like for the, until this past week, I probably hadn't done a Bible plan or like spent one-on-one time with God about three or four months. And I've seen so much growth because when you come and you put the effort in, God's going to pour it back into you. And it may sound like I'm like, get in, the, do the Bible plan with your small groups. But that's not, that's one tool in the toolbox that God has for you. I'm just showing you what you can do for those moments when you feel so lost. My third point is to just talk to God. I was going to put pray to God, but then I was like, you know, there's this connotation around prayer that it's just, dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this, blah, 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 Amen. But it's really not like that. When you pray with God, you're having a conversation, open-ended. When you are, you know, God's word says, pray constantly, never stop. And that doesn't mean, like, it doesn't mean praying a certain way. (laughs) It means just talk to him like you would talk to a friend. It's not some big, scary guy up in the sky. He already knows what you're going to say, and he already has your name written on his heart. He wants to hear from you. He wants to hear that you're struggling because he wants to help you. For me, when I, when I pray or when I, when I spend moments with God, it can be looking at someone and thinking about them. Oh, God, I just need to pray for them. And I just pray in my mind. And I'm just like, dear God, I just pray whatever they're facing that you help them. And sometimes that's it. And that's all we need. But we have to do that consistently because when you're praying and when you're being there with Jesus, temptation is so much harder to fall into. When you're actually not just like, not just saying that you are or doing it, when you're actually experiencing the Holy Spirit and experiencing what God's plan for you is, temptation is so much harder to fall into because it's just so good. His love is so good that it casts it out. And this is, this one, being open to to things that make you uncomfortable. I'm uncomfortable being up here. I'm uncomfortable leaving my house. I'm very anxious. But you know what? If I never did anything that makes me uncomfortable, 
then I would never grow. We, you know, I just feel like I've, I've heard a lot of things lately that just makes me frustrated because we are so privileged. You know, living in America is such a privilege. And it's a privilege to come to church. And I just want you guys to know that, that it's a privilege to live in a country where you're free to walk into a church and get loved on. Even when it's scary or it's hard, it's a privilege. And when you start appreciating that, when you start looking at life as a privilege instead of just something you have to do, you're going to get a lot more comfortable with it. Because it stops turning into something you have to do, and that's something, it's something that you start, it's something that you start getting to do. I get to plug into this person. This person gets to be my friend. You have to come to a point in your life when you realize that the friends that you have are a reflection of you. And this goes along with um, being open to doing things that make you uncomfortable because it's uncomfortable making new friends. But if the friends that you have aren't reflecting Jesus, then you need to get out. That's the best way I can put it because we tell ourselves, "Mm, I can be Jesus to them, but can you really? Like, can you really stand there against someone who's telling you that they don't believe in Jesus and that you're a liar and say, well, Jesus loves you? Some of you may can, but I know for the majority of us, we can't. So, and it's hard. It's really hard to say to someone, I can't be your friend anymore because God told me so. No one wants to be that person. But that's how you grow, is by doing those things that make you uncomfortable. My next, um, the next thing I want to talk about is the tools that God gives you. I mean, I really like this verse, James 1.17, every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. Everything about you is a gift. There is nothing about you that is a burden, It is handcrafted by God. He hand chose every single feature about you for a reason. It is a gift to have hands so that we can write. It is a gift to have ears so that we can hear. I have a friend who's going blind, and I never realized how much of a gift it is to actually have eyes to see. And that when I walk somewhere, I don't have to worry about bumping into things because I can see it. I can see the beauties. I can see colors. And these are all things God wants us to use so that we can grow towards him. He wants us to use our eyesight and our mouths and our hearing to reflect Jesus. We really have to come to a point where we ask ourselves, like, is what I'm doing for him? Is the music I'm putting into my body reflecting Christ. If someone looked at your phone and they went through your music, this is what God really convicted me of this. If someone went through your phone and looked at the music you listen to and the people that you're talking to, would they see Jesus? That's really hard for me to stand up here and say because I know that I've struggled so many points in my life not to do that and to be that person who is listening to stuff that wasn't, that just wasn't filling us up. And we're misusing what God has given us. I don't, re- I don't think, like, as teenagers, we don't realize this, but God has a purpose for each and every one of you. And he wants you to serve him in an abundance of ways. But in order to do that, you have to wake up and realize that he's giving you tools. Like, you have to say to yourself, my, earring, my hearing is a gift, God. How can I use it to serve you today, God? God, Ask God, say, God, what, what about me did you craft so I could serve you and to serve others? I really enjoy the story of Zacchaeus, which is Luke 19, 1 to 10, where Zacchaeus, he's like a really short man. He was also a tax collector who, was <laughs> who at the time was like the evilest of the evil. So Zacchaeus heard Jesus was coming into town And there's a big crowd surrounding Jesus, and he couldn't see him. So what did Zacchaeus do? He climbs in a tree. And he said, here I am, here I am. Do you see me, God? 
Jesus, I come to you and I want to I want to bow down to you and I want to give it all. And Jesus pulled him down from that tree and Zacchaeus immediately fell on his knees. Jesus met Zacchaeus where he was because Zacchaeus used the tools he had been given. Not everyone is going to have the same toolbox, but if we use them in the right ways, then God will meet us and God will God's love will come and overflow into you so much that you want to give it all. That you just want to be like, God, take it all. Take all the money in my bank account. God, take everything. I want to be yours because that's what his love does. And that's when, this is also the hard part, that's when temptation's going to come in. That's when the devil is going to start talking to you because he knows. He sees that God is doing something in your life and he doesn't like it. It's gonna, there's going to be people that come into your life, like the people sitting next to Zacchaeus when they saw him in a, tr- in a tree, they ridiculed him and said, why are you in a tree? Jesus doesn't even want to see the likes of you. When Jesus wants to see the likes of everyone. I can't talk about it enough, but God loves us so, so much. No matter how tall we are, no matter how short we are, he loves us not because who we are, but because... Who, whose we are, we're his. And now I get to talk about what happens after you do those steps. Like after you grow, this is what happens. You get to experience the harvest. And the harvest is so, I'm living in the harvest right now in my life and I'm just so incredibly grateful. There's like no words for it to explain when you know that God has done something in your life. When your hard work turns into something, when your hard work turns into beauty, it is such a satisfaction. There's nothing else in this world that can replace it. But I just, there's going to be people that come to you and say, well, why are you doing what you're doing? Why do you come, why do you spend your Sunday nights at a youth group? Why don't you come out and hang out with us? You just got to keep on fighting and keep on living for him. Because in order to get the harvest, we have to put the seeds in the ground. We have to sow them and we have to water them daily to experience what I can only sum up as bliss. We have to put the hard work in. And it may seem like, why am I doing the hard work? Why? Like, what's the point? Well, Jesus already did it. Jesus died on the cross in the most painful way so that you could experience it. And what we do to feel God's love is a fraction, a fraction of what God did on that cross. And that's incredibly hard to hear because that means we have to do something and we have to give up temptation and flesh. But when we do, we get to see growth. We get to see what God can do when you just step aside I was really nervous for this sermon tonight. I just was like, God, I, I didn't want to do it. I'll just be frank. I <laughs> told my mom, I was like, can I, can I just not? <laughs> and then I came up here, and then I'm still nervous. But I know that God's going to do something. And maybe none of you got something out of it, but I know I got something out of it. And that's, that's what's most important. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. I, I don't know if any of you got anything out of it, but I know I did. I know. <laughs> Thanks, Jesus. Yeah. Woo. Get to listen to myself talk all night. I love this. <laughs> oh, goodness. I know. <laughs> oh, guys. I am. I really am. When do I get it from? Oh, I know the post. I was getting to that. So, guys, I, you know what? I'm just going to pick it up. I worked really hard on this. I did. I'm going to tell you. I spent like an hour creating this. And it's like, not because I'm really proud of what I did, but I think it's a really good reminder of what we're growing towards. And that Elevate is growing, that each and one of you are growing. Like, this is like a ruler, and we can see where we measure up. But really, I made this so you guys could understand and take something home, <laughs> take something home that reminds you of what we learned tonight. And the whole point of this is we're after, at, 
after small groups, I want everyone to come and write one way that they want to grow, one way that they want to grow towards God. And you don't have to put your name if you don't want to. That's okay. I understand. There's some, there's some things that just not everybody needs to know. But I want you to know that whatever you put on here, there's going to be someone praying for you about. I don't know where this is going to end up going, but I just know that the people who write on this are going to be prayed for, and I believe that they're going to experience growth and harvest. Not because I want you to come and sign this, woohoo. No, this is what this is just something that God has given you to use so that we can remember what He did. I learned best through physical, like physical activities. Writing stuff down for me helps me remember it. So that's one of the reasons why I chose to do this, because I just want to give you guys the opportunity. And maybe I don't know about any of you, but I have some things that I need to grow towards that I need to talk about. I need to have some real hard conversations tonight. And that's one of the things, of the beauties about Elevate, is we're going to have a time where we can share about it, and we can talk about what chains God has broken. And we can write them up here, knowing that we will not be condemned, knowing that we will not be judged, but instead we'll just have people praying for us and loving on us. And guys, that's the most important thing I want you to know, that you are not growing alone, but you are growing towards a God, and you're growing into this family who loves you. And there's so many people in this room who want to serve you. And yeah, I'm just going to pray for us, and then Alyssa's going to come up and talk a little bit. Um, Dear God, I just thank you for today, and thank you for the opportunity you gave us. God... I don't know if I said the right things or what what just happened, but God, I just pray that you do something beautiful. I pray for a season of harvest within Elevate, not because of what I said, but because what you say in your word and what you say through me. God, I pray for each and every one in this room that they know you more and that they can grow closer to you. In God's name, amen.